Hi, I'm Chris from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a multi-piece headliner in a 1956 Beetle. Now the multi-piece headliner started back in the split window era and went up to about 1963. And then after 63, from 64 on, the, uh, the pieces came down and they kind of condensed in more to a one-piece headliner. Uh, and I'll show you the differences there, but um, uh, basically you're going to be working with either an eight or nine-piece headliner, whether it's tweed or cloth or vinyl. Uh, 63 was the year where they went to vinyl and had the multi-piece. 64 is when they went to a more of a, a one-piece headliner uh, but stayed vinyl throughout through, uh, through the end of the, the Beetle years. Um, but the uh, mohair cloth or the vintage cloth headliners were what was available from 62 and earlier. So we're going to be working with one of those and uh, I'm going to show you the differences now and, uh, and uh, eventually how we put it in. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be working on a uh, multi-piece headliner with cloth, this vintage cloth. It's like a gray cloth. Uh, you can get this from either SoFine in Texas or you can get it from um, WolfsburgWest.com. They sell this type of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a mohair, but it kind of feels like polyester in a way. So uh, that's kind of what's available. They run about 200 bucks. Uh, or you can go with... Uh, tweed cloth, which is what I really like. It's more of a woven material. I really enjoy this stuff. It looks vintage. I know it wasn't original to the Beatles, but it's very durable. Uh, it's very forgiving, so if you did mess up, this, this material is very good to hide some mistakes. Uh, they have these in different colors. SoFine has these with, this is a bone tweed, or you have an oatmeal tweed. They also have a beige tweed. They have a, uh, SoFine in Texas has a wide variety of tweed colors. Um, also with the vintage cloth you can either get this in beige uh, or the gray or they also have it in like a bone white as well. Lenny from West Coast Classic Restorations out in California sells a headliner. This is more of like a wool. Uh, a little more expensive. You're probably looking at around $400, $500 to get this headliner. So um, you know you can, if you want to be absolutely period correct, this is something you might want to consider. Uh, but you can get away with the, uh, the vintage cloth either from SoFine. Uh, or Wolfsburg West. Um, and like I said, it's more of like an eight or nine piece headliner. TMI also makes uh, mohair or cloth. And, um, you know, depending on, again, which company you go with, TMI will usually give you like a nine piece. Uh, Wolfsburg West and, and SoFine will give you like a uh, more of an eight piece headliner. But uh, this is basically the materials that you'll be able to get. Now, keep in mind, they stuff this in the boxes when they're getting shipped. Uh, so when you get this in, a lot of times it's all wrinkled. So you might want to get an iron uh, when, it, when it comes down to it uh, to finally iron out some of these wrinkles to put it in. But what we're going to do is we're also going to use a hair dryer inside to soften up the material, to give it a little more stretch, you know, a little more pliability, you know, just to get it in there better. So um, now also what, one thing to consider on the 50s bugs, um, you're supposed to match the door pillars uh, the door posts and the under the quarter windows are usually supposed to match the seat upholstery in some way. So what we're doing is we have a blue vinyl seat upholstery going into this car. Um, now, as an option, usually when you go through either Lenny from West Coast Classics, if you get the seat material from him, he's going to give you the door posts and the under the quarter windows in the color of the seat upholstery, and that usually goes with uh, the car to make it correct. Um, but if you're not going with that route, don't be you know, afraid because at least in the kit, they'll give you the, the door post and under quarter windows anyway uh, as part of the cloth material. But just to keep in mind, if you want to be period correct, up until about 58, 59, uh, they went with, like if you had red seats in your car or blue seats, the under the quarter windows and door posts would be the color of the seat. So you might want to consider uh, getting that. SoFine will actually make these for you if you wanted them as an extra, uh, extra option. So. Um, all right, so let's get on to the padding. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to pad up our headliner. Now, we already somewhat, you know, gutted that car already that we're working on. And I have videos on YouTube on how to take the seats out, how to take your headliner out, how to strip your car down, uh, how to even take the windows out. So you can check that on my website or on my YouTube channel, um, you know, how to, how to remove all this stuff from the car. But we're going to just jump right in. 
Um, but what, we, what I like to do is I like to repad up into my headliner on the pillars and whatnot, you know, to give the headliner more of a posh look and it's also a good sound deadener. Um, this stuff I used to get from Home Depot, it's made by a company called Armstrong. Um, it's more like a, it's like a felt underlayment padding material, I guess they would use for carpet. It's like a uh, quarter of an inch in thickness. I kind of peel off this plastic backing and it's, it's got a lot of nice stretch to it. Cut it to size and uh, start padding up my pillars and whatnot. But if you can't get it from uh, Home Depot, you can try to find a carpet supply store nearby. Or you can go to a, uh, a textile manufacturer who does cloths and, uh, and rugs and whatnot, and they might actually sell foam. That's maybe in this thickness you might want to use. Uh, to make it easier for you, jbugs.com, SoFine, uh, even Mid-America Motor Works will actually sell a headliner pad kit already cut to size for you. All you got to do is just install it. But if you want to just save a few bucks, uh, you, would, you buy just some of your own material. This usually goes like up on the pillars, like I said. or you get this stuff, which is about half inch thick. This is a real thick jute padding material. We also use this to cover our seats sometimes. Uh, this goes up into the roof area. This is a thicker air, uh, piece that you're gonna wanna use for your, your roof. Like I said, if you can't find this stuff, there's kits out there that you can purchase. I think they're like $40, $50, maybe $60, and they give you the, cut, the pieces already pre-cut. Uh, I just buy this stuff in bulk because we're always working on these cars. So, um, if you can't find that, uh, AutoZone sells a roll of carpet. This is like a nappy carpet, um, shag hair maybe they would call it. Um, it's a little bit thinner, maybe it's an eighth inch thick. Ten bucks a roll. You can use this actually to pad up the headliner as well if you did want to use that. Here's some of the tools I got laid out here on the table uh, that I'm going to show you what we're going to need and what you, you can pick up uh, from your local hardware store or even your dollar store. Um, a pair of scissors, of course. You're going to want a good set of those. Um, I like this razor. You're going to need a whole box of these razors. You're going to go through these a lot because they get dull real fast. But I like this razor because it just flips open. You take the blade out. You can put it right back in. Real simple. Instead of unscrewing it like some of the other blades that are uh, handles that are out there. You buy this pack. There's a, there's a few hundred of them in here. So you're going to need those. Uh, of course, a pair of pliers can come in handy. Uh, general hammer. A rubber mallet you're going to want, um, and then these high impact plastic tools that are used to remove body molding, door panels, things like that. This curve is great uh, to put the headliners in behind the pillars. You're going to want to use something like this to get the headliner in. VW actually used a tool very similar to this to put their headliners in. You're going to want a good respirator, I don't know if you can see that Jackie, uh, either something like this or a paper. Uh, mask at least to put on. Be in a well ventilated area because you're just not going to want to breathe this stuff in. I mean we're in a nice garage here so you know the air at least circulates well. But if you're in a small confined place you know the glue smell could actually get to you. The glue that I like to use is this 3M High Strength 90. Um, not cheap. It's like $12, $13 a can. You can, maybe you could find it on eBay uh, for a little bit cheaper. The reason I like this glue is because it has this type of a nozzle to it and there's a high, low, and medium setting on here so I can turn the nozzle and it, you know, the stream comes out from weak to strong and depending on where you are is, is how much you know, pressure you're going to want and the good thing, uh, what I like about this nozzle is because it comes out more of like silly string it doesn't come out in a fine spray that you would get out of a nozzle like this which the problem with the, the misty spray is that it gets all over the car and you're not going to want that, you know, because then it gets to be a pain in the butt to take the glue off the body. If you do get glue on the body, WD-40 with a good microfiber cloth can actually take the glue off the car. Uh, just don't let it set up too, too long. It'll just The longer it sets up, the longer, the harder it's going to be to take the, the glue off. Uh, AutoZone also sells this Permatex uh, heavy-duty uh, glue. This is actually pretty good, too. It has the nozzle that I don't like on it, but actually comes out like the silly string. So this is not a bad nozzle, um, but I still think the best one is this 3M90 that you can get at AutoZone. So you want to definitely pick those up. Um, for a headliner, you might need three or, three or four. If you're doing carpet as well, maybe five cans. Here's a heat gun to warm up the stuff, uh, the headliner, to at least make it softer. If you're using vinyl, you're definitely going to want to use this. You know, keep in mind vinyl is a cheaper material to, to put into the 
the earlier cars, but it's a little more difficult to work with because you've got to soften it up and there's a lot of wrinkles that come out with vinyl. So you, you're gonna wanna be careful. If you don't have a heat gun, you can just use a regular hair dryer and that's fine too. And the other thing is too, uh, your hands. You're gonna wanna keep your hands clean while you're doing this because you are working with new material. So sometimes you might wanna keep baby wipes on, you know, on standby here when your hands get dirty. Uh, so make sure you keep your hands clean while you're working on this. And as you're working on your headliner, don't work on anything else but your headliner or interior upholstery. Because uh, anytime you doing other mechanical works or trying to clean up any other part of the car during your restoration, your hands are going to get dirty. So if, you, if you're working on interior, working on headliner, just concentrate on that and don't do really anything else. Also, you're going to need some of these. These are regular like, I don't know what they call these, like notepad clips or kind of like an advanced uh, paper clip in a way. These are strong clips that we're going to need to use for definitely for the back window because the back window can be a pain in the butt to put in and in these earlier bugs it's a one piece uh, uh, seam back there there are no overlaps or, or anything like that so it's a little difficult uh, to get the headliner in back there so you're going to need these clips um, and then you can pick these up from any uh, stationary store staples or office max or something so all right that's about it uh, let's start going over to the car and i'll explain what we're going to get into with the padding you know, we already started gutting this car and you know, what you're going to want to do is to gut the car, like I said, I got videos online you can see, but to take the windows out first, I usually like to just use a razor. You just cut the old seal out with the razor and that'll pop out. Uh, quarter windows do the same thing uh, and, and along with the front windshield. If you want to save the old seals, there is a way uh, to, to push the old seal out. You just kind of, you know, pull it away from the body a little bit and gently start pushing it out. The front windshield could be a little more problematic with that because you can jeopardize cracking the front windshield. So I usually, whenever I'm doing a restoration, I know I'm going to just get new seals and new chrome to go in those. So I'll just cut the old seal out. Um, and then you, as you can see, we started uh, pulling away some of the old uh, padding that VW always put on these cars. Um, they always had it around the back window area. Like you can see here, it's kind of... It's kind of like felty, it's kind of mohair-ish, um, I don't know, jute material that they have. Um, I usually like to take that all off and just clean it all out. You should get yourself like a wire brush and you just start taking this off and that'll start coming off. You just want a nice, and clean, a nice clean surface. You also had it on the pillars up over here and overhead here. Um, their padding usually started from back here around the grippers and then came all the way up to about here. That's usually where they stopped. I usually like to go a little bit further to the front over the doorway just to keep the padding more uniform. Um, they always stop there, but I'm going to do a little more. And they also do a little bit under, or just above the, the window, and they put some padding back here. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do all that, where to put it and stuff. But um, as you have the everything taken out, the next thing you're going to want to do is the old assist straps that you could eventually put back after the headliner is put in, you know, these, most bugs all have the, these little hooks that, you know, go over the assist strap and it's a coat hook and they usually had them up, you know, either over here or over here uh, and you should still save the old screw and what you're going to want to do is put that old screw back into where the hooks go so then when you have the headliner in, now you can feel around for the screw and then eventually cut the headliner material away so then you can get the screw out and then you can be able to get these in. If you don't, it's tough to find the holes in there. Um, same thing with uh, the, the later style, the 60s headliners. They started putting these, like I said to you, these big, I don't know, they're, they're big fasteners that went in to hold the headliner in place. Why they did it, I really don't know. But they usually had them over here in the back. Uh, so usually I put those in as well. So just then event afterwards you can uh, feel around for it, cut away the material and then put this in. Um, and then the other thing is too, if you're going to put pop-out windows in, later model bugs in the 60s already had the pre-drilled holes for the pop-out windows. Again, put the screws in the back area here behind the quarter windows so you can uh, feel around for it to get it out, to get them out eventually so you can then put the windows in. Um, and that's, that's really it. What we're going to start doing now is uh, I'm going to disconnect the dome light, take off some more of this uh, old padding, and then we're going to start repadding uh, the car up. Okay? Here's another spot back here that's 
pretty common on the early bugs. Um, there's a hook that goes right here. And what this does is this holds the backrest uh, in place so it doesn't fall forward. Um, uh, when you're doing the backrest on the back seat, just make sure there's a hole on the, the frame there that has a screw on it to hold the strap in. But what we're going to do is just to make sure we can put this back in later, again, leave the screw in the body there so you can feel around for it and then make sure it's uh, I'm actually going to back off a little bit so I can feel it a little bit better. There we go. You can feel that lump, cut the material, then take that screw out, and then you'll be able to put this right back in. All right, so I'm just going to start scrubbing some of this old patting material off. I just wanted to show you what we do. I usually like to take all this stuff off. Just use your wire brush. All right, so what we're going to start to do now is start to move the old grippers away. Here's some grippers that hold part of the headliner in. And again, we're working on a multi-piece headliner. So there's different sections of this headliner that, you know, have different tucks and different positions. Um, so like I said, there's one back piece area here that goes on the back window. And then there's another section where a strip goes in here to go up over the pillars and behind the rear quarter window. But what you're going to want to do is open up these grippers because you got to slip in uh, a plastic strip that's sewn to the material into these grippers to hold it into place. So we're going to start just regular pair of pliers. Sometimes you might need a screwdriver. You just want to open them up just a little bit. Whoop. Okay. Open these up. Okay. Okay. Here's the wind lace area here that holds in your door post. Uh, and this is the first area we're going to install the headliner. Uh, you're going to want to open these grippers up a little more, get these teeth open a little more, get, use a tool like this, or like the impact tool I was telling you about with the hook on it. Uh, it's got a flat edge, kind of like a putty blade. And you want to just start prying open the teeth. Okay, just give it a nice gap in here so you can slip that wind lace in. Now, to remove the old one, like we did uh, earlier before the, the video, um, you would do the same thing. You would just get in here, open these grippers, and then just pull the old wind lace out, and then uh, you should have no problem. Just pull it down from top to bottom, it should pull right out. Um, now, as you notice, as we go down to the bottom here of this uh, area, you'll see that the grippers on this car have rusted away earlier on, and the old grippers came off. Grippers should actually come down to the bottom here to hold the whole wind lace. So we're going to have to improvise here, either using some self-tapper screws or some nails, uh, you know, small nails that can hold the lace in. Uh, earlier bugs, you might be finding that these grippers are rotting away, so you have to kind of improvise there. But uh, for the most part, they usually stay on the cars. So um, start opening these grippers now to, so you can get your wind lace ready. Here's the other set of grippers over the doorway that you're going to want to have these opened as well for the headliner to tuck into. This one's, these are a lot easier to, to, to get done. Like I said, you just use your tool here. You can just kind of squeeze it in there and just kind of pry them open. You just want to be able to get that headliner in a lot easier this way. Um, let's get onto the padding here. I'm going to start cutting some strips here for the door post. I'll show you how to make some good door post uh, material to make the post look nice and posh. And we're going to put these up in the pillars in the back window. So basically, I just get my razor. Make sure you get new razors. These, like I said, they go all the time. So I start cutting some strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip, I don't know, say, I don't know, three inches, four inches, something like that. And just kind of cut it straight down. Okay, so now you got your, <clears throat> that's one pillar, so now I just usually take the back, the plastic off, you might not have this plastic, but 
Um, and again, another thing too, keep in mind, patience with this. Now we're going to start putting the headliner in. Just be patient with this. Take, take your time. You know, they used to do this 15 minutes in the factory. But you know what? Uh, now that we have limited tools as compared to what they used to have, you know, it might take you a day or two to put this whole headliner together, maybe even more. So. Again, you might have the kit that's already pre-cut, so then you're in good luck, uh, in good shape rather. Um, but just remember, some of those kits don't have the back window piece, so you might still have to use, you know, to, to, to cut this. Okay. We'll see what I'm doing in a minute once we start putting this together. Do one more strip. Okay, so those are for the pillars. You see, I cut four strips here for the pillars, and I'll show you what I mean afterwards. But um, now for the door posts, well, I hope we have enough here. I think we should. Let me do the back window piece, actually. Back window was about uh, 20 inches or so. Uh, I think we're okay there. So this has some stretch to it, so even if you're running a little short, you can always stretch it out a little bit. So. Okay, this will be for the back window. You'll see what I'm going to do there. And then I'm going to cut this piece in half. And this will be for the door posts. So like I said, these are about three, four inches. Let me see exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, oh, actually, I'm a little off. <laughs> Sorry. About four to five and a half inches, something like that. You want to cut strips like that. That thickness, it could be, some could be a little bit thinner. Uh, this is four inches, so yeah, anything between four and five inches, you should be okay in thickness. You're gonna trim this anyway, so you don't have to be so precise. I'm gonna start by making my uh, door posts. There's not much out there as far as people making door posts. I actually have a video on it on YouTube already, but I'm gonna show you here anyway. Um, here's our like four to five inch strip of the felt padding, which is again like a quarter inch in thickness. And what I do is I just get some of my spray glue. And you want our door post to look nice and posh when, they're, when the, the material's laid around it. So the best thing I think I like to do is just kind of spray this up here. Now you don't have to rush. It's not like this glue dries very quickly. Um, it's actually, this stuff glues better when it's tacky instead of wet. So, and then basically what I do, I just start rolling the material. If you can see that. It'll grab. Just go slow. Again, patience with this. There's no rush. You want this to come out right. You rush, that's when you screw it up and it looks like crap. <laughs> Right. Doesn't have to look that pretty. It's just as long as it's kind of rolled, this is going to go in the door post area. If you have some foam, foam is okay. The only problem with foam is that you have more square edges. You want this to be a rounded look. You don't want any harsh edges popping through the, uh, you know, poking out from the, the, the headliner. All right, so that's that. I think this in general is about. Uh, 36 inches. So as long as it's 36 inches in length, that will basically cover your door post area from top to bottom. Okay. Okay, so basically we're going to put the new padding here on the door post area. Now you might still have some of your old remnants there too. If you want to keep that you know, that's fine, but like I said, I always take off the old stuff and then clean up the surface, make sure it's nice and clean. So when you glue it, you don't want old glue working with new glue. It just kind of doesn't marry well together. So we're just gonna get some new stuff. Get your 90 glue. I usually put it on low for this. So I don't want it splattering anywhere. I don't want the glue going outside the car and getting on top of the body and you, know, you just got more cleaning up to do, so. Uh, now this type of glue works like dry on dry in a way. So you, you glue the surface, glue the material, let it tack up a little bit, let it get dry, and then you put it on there. Alright, so 
basically if you want to punch up a little closer here see what I'm doing I want to wear your respirator now you know this stuff can be kind of evil and basically I glued to the bottom here I don't know if you can see that to right around there that's where this material is going to end Okay, working your way down. I like to kind of marry it real close to the grippers, um, just because you want the material to be posh. You know, it's got a nice, you know, surface to it. Go on the grippers a little bit. That's okay. It's actually probably a little better for you because you don't want the grippers to show through the material. So just kind of pat it up there. It's all good. That's it. So that's one. Now just do the other side. All right, so we're gonna put the padding in the back window area here. Um, before I get here, I'm gonna have my dad just put a bag around the back window just because we don't want to spray. I'm gonna be spraying some glue here. I don't want the glue going out the window and getting on the body of the car, of course. So I got myself a new blade. And I'm going to be putting this square piece right over here. Don't worry about the opening. We'll get to that. Um, but I just want to start putting this material on the back window. Because VW had the material all back here. They padded all their back window areas, you know, with all new uh, with padding. So, you know, just again, to make the headliner look more like a pillow in a way. You know, make it look posh and comfortable looking. So, all right, so we're just going to... Spray this back headliner, uh, back window area. Just make sure you, your nozzle's clean. Sometimes the glue gets all gunked up in there. You want to clean that out with your fingers, you know. Just get that out of there. So, just going to start spraying. Get up into the gripper areas too. You just want to surround this with a good amount of glue. Try to get it here too in the, uh, where the lip is, where the, the seal would sit. Like right up in here too, you know. So I got enough glue on there. I don't have to go on the material itself. I'm just going to start putting it up there. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Let's just start shaping it around. Just massage it in. Uh, it's, in essence, this is the way you're going to be kind of putting the back headliner piece in, but not this easy. <laughs> you can give yourself a little room on the end over here where these grippers are. You might not want to, don't go all the way in the grippers, because we noticed last time when we did this, and then we glued the headliner in, the headliner kind of bunched up on the padding. So you got to be careful. Just kind of give it, you know, a good maybe half inch from the grippers and I think you should be all right. Okay. All right, so we're just outside the car now. There's a couple spots I couldn't get. I got, I'll come out here and fix. But you can see here, the material's got to get a little bit tighter to this lip here. And then down in here, if you want to take a peek over here, See the material is not just reaching the lip yet. You want the, the material to end at the bottom of this ridge. So we're gonna just gonna spray that and then go back on the inside of the car and start pushing it. This stuff will stretch good. So, unlike the headliner, that's when we use our hair dryer a bit to kind of soften it. But this will grab up in here. If it doesn't stick just right away, it's okay. We're going to cut this window, and then we can always go back and fix it a little more. Just with your thumb, you know, fingers, just kind of press it up into place. 
just so you know where to cut. Right, so I'm gonna get my razor now. Make sure you got a new blade, so it cuts good. Find your ridge where the where the uh, the window opening is. That lip that sticks down, and just start. Okay. Where am I here? I'm good. missed <laughs> see mistakes happen no big deal there we go look at one I'm cutting straight past it's all good okay and you just pull your circle out and that's it and you just go back get the padding in straight and we look okay just fix this line here, that's gone. That's what's good about this felt material, it's very forgiving. You do make a cut in here, you make a mistake, you can kind of smooth it over and kind of hide the, the line where you cut so the headliner doesn't show it. But that's it, so we got the back window in. At least the padding for now. And we move. So I'm gonna cut this piece right here too. We don't need that, that's a little extra. I can already hear if you knock on it, it doesn't have that tinny sound. It's got a nice thunk to it. So it's a good deadener. And that's what you want because the motor is right back here. So I uh, also want to point out too, you know, we, uh, if you still have, if, you, if you're doing a survivor car and you still have some of the old padding in there that you want to keep for the luggage compartment, just pull it away a little bit because the headliner you want again to glue to the metal. You don't want to glue the headliner to the padding that's on this. Uh, usually the 50s models they had like some form of a horsehair type of a, a padding. You can usually get in there with your blade here that you could just kind of pry it away and get new or just leave it. Uh, the later style in the 60s they have some more jute material which is kind of similar to this padding material, the material we're going to use on the roof and uh, they usually have that on here. Uh, but usually that stuff can come off with just uh, your plastic high impact blades, you know, here the putty blades or whatever you want to just get in there and, and uh, yank it out. And I usually put new material in anyway. So, uh, but yeah, you just want to make sure. Now, sometimes I put down a deadener like uh, Dynamat or I have a video called um, for sound insulation on YouTube. Uh, and I use a product called Quick Roof that you can get from Home Depot. Uh, same as Dynamat. You basically roll that stuff out. It's in like aluminum sheets, and underneath the sheet is a nice uh, uh, rubbery adhesive material. And basically, I roll that down here on the uh, the luggage area, and that stops the vibration. You might want to put that down now before you start putting the headliner down, because you can glue the headliner to that material because it's not a felt material; it's a solid material. So, uh, all right. So we're going to start working up the pillars. All right. So what we're going to start with next after we did the back window, we're going to uh, proceed here starting back here by the grippers and we're going to work our way up this pillar here and the first strip will probably come from the grippers to about here and then we have a second strip to continue forward but um, what I like to do is I like to put this in here again it's, it's a good deadener the headliner is going to you know hug this area so you're going to want that padding behind there and that's the reason why VW put that there to begin with so uh, just going to start here I'm going to take the glue off your nozzle here a little bit and just start spraying up. Okay. Now again, you really don't have to do dry on dry here. I just kind of put it on, put it into place, and it'll stick pretty well. But what I like to do is get it on the grippers here. I don't know if you can see that. Put the felt on the grippers and now when you put this material on you want the top of the material here where you cut to go to the top of the pillar don't go beyond it don't go below it you want it to be actually even with the lip here with the ridge the edge 
So again, you don't want imperfections to show through the headliner. If you go over, it's okay. You can always cut it with a razor later on. Okay, let's pick it up. Let's massage it down. to have a piece sticking right there so we'll get that on there um, we'll trim this a little bit better over here no big deal but all right so we did this one side you can then do it on the other side cool all right so we're going to continue on from here um i got this side done so i'm just going to grab another strip and just kind of join it with this one and kind of line it up with this one. You know, we'll get rid of the seam, but then we're going to come over where the dome light comes in. Just go over it for now, and we're actually going to continue up to about here. If you follow me up this way, see, you're going to put the the padding to this corner here of the gripper diagonally up, and I'm actually going to cover the grippers as well, so at least the grippers don't show through the material, so the padding will actually hide the teeth marks, you know, so makes it look nice. Don't worry if there's any overspray anywhere. Like I said on the car, we'll just get some WD-40 later and get rid of it. Kind of join this seam right here. Headliner won't show through that, so I think you're all right. Okay, now I'm going to start stretching the material a little bit down so I can cover the grippers. Just came a little too short on that. Okay, good. That's a good thing. That's what's nice about this material it stretches and you can fit it right. You got a section here where you we went a little too high above the pillar here. Like I said, you don't want this overlap going past the pillar line. You want this to be nice and smooth. So just get your razor blade and just kind of tap it off up top. You want that nice and uniform so you don't see any lumps. You'll see get any binding going on up there with the headliner when you start gluing around. You want it to look nice and straight. Okay. Cool. Here's the area at the end of the, uh, right above the door, we're gonna have to cut the excess off here and make and kind of pull it back so it kind of goes on a diagonal. The headliner always goes from the gripper here, kind of diagonal back. You kind of see the line there, see where the old glue was. So basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of set it up into place there, fold it back a bit. So you get kind of a triangular diagonal line sort of thing going and uh, just kind of cut that off, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, just like that. Okay, I'll cut the excess off here. I have to spray a little more glue. I'm we'll overlapping a little bit down here to pass the grippers. You can see that. See these grippers here? The material is going a little past it. See? I have to trim that off. Make sure it's straight with the grippers, the bottom of the grippers. So now I'm going to just cut some of the excess that's dangling down here below the grippers. You just want that, like I said, uniform. So I can feel the edge of the gripper here. I'm just going to cut this off. And just go straight across. Okay. 
Yep. Okay, good. That's fine. All right, so just do the same to the other side. Okay, so VW back in the day even used to put some padding right here. You can see some of the remnants of the old glue. Um, the old oval that we cut out for the back rear window, I'm just going to cut this in half and use it for both sides. Put a piece here and put a piece on the other side. And uh, that's basically then it for this quarter inch padding. Um, and then we'll go to the roof and put the thicker half inch padding up in there. Um, all right, so let's get to that over here. I'm just going to kind of half this up. As you can see, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be that uniform. No one's going to see it, the headliner's there, so I'm just going to cut a straight line. Well, hopefully I cut a straight line. <laughs> okay, and normally it was just something that kind of went here. I'll trim it afterwards, but basically it went right there, and I'll do some trimming later, but let me position it and then... We'll cut this over the wheel hump here. That's no big deal. You want the wheel hump clear because the headline is going to be gluing straight down to the wheel hump. So you want to make sure this is all clear and you don't have any padding there. You'll put, we'll put padding on top of this hump and on the luggage area after the headliner is down. So let me just get a little more here. A lot of people ask me what are these holes for in the back compartment here. Actually, when the guys were on the assembly line, they used to get their fingers in here to get to the molding that attaches to the outside of the car to put the little uh, rubber boots on. Crazy. Little tidbit there. <coughs> Okay, so just pull that away. That's fine. And I'll probably cut it away from here. Just to give myself a little more. Okay, stuck. All right, just do the same to the other side. Just trim it away. Make it look nice and uniform. And now you got some good padding there. All right, we're going to cut the center square section in the, in the top roof above the pillars. Um, VW usually had those cut in different sections, you know, like they'll, they maybe cut, the, we're going to make one big long piece to fill the whole uh, inner roof. So um, it's about usually about 38 inches wide by what was it? 50, 59, 59 inches long. Um, that's for the oval window bugs. You just double check, use a tape measure, go in there above the back window up to the front pillar, um, the front header bow, and then uh, side to side just to see the width. You could always trim it later on after it's glued in, uh, but um, we're just going to cut this now. And okay. Okay, so we're just gonna, uh, I'm just, you know, punching in the, the head, the padding a little bit tighter in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just using my high impact plastic, those blades that I was telling you about in the beginning, uh, to just get it nice and tight in there so we can cut this off. And again, these blades you can pick up from Harbor Freight. I think that pack of five for like six, seven dollars. These are really valuable. So just get that in there nice and tight. Now, when we cut this, I'll tell you why I'm so close to the pillars. <clears throat> okay, start back here. Okay, the reason why I cut it so close to the pillar, a lot of people ask me, you know, why you go so close, is 
when I show you the top square piece that goes in, there's plastic strips that get tucked behind these, these uh, pillars here. So a lot of times the new material, depending on where you get the material from, um, whether it's so fine or TMI or uh, Wolfsburg West, wherever, sometimes the material gets tight and sometimes the, me the measurements aren't always exact. So when I sometimes would put these in, they would get so tight. So when it's inside the cabin here and it's from, you slip the, 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 uh, the strip in back here and the strip in on this side, a lot of times it gets so tight that the, the, the plastic strip that's on the headliner flips backwards and starts to come out. This padding here, this close, will actually prevent the headliner from uh, actually coming out from behind here. So that's the reason why we go tight here. Uh, normally they didn't ever have that in the, in the factory. They were actually cut a little bit shorter from here. But I leave that here just because it'll hold that plastic strip inside this. And uh, I'll show you that later on when we're putting this in. You'll understand it a little bit better, but um, that's why we do that. So. Let's say we did it all around the perimeter here, up here, back window, same thing. Usually where it pops out, that strip, is usually the back window area or the front because uh, it's just so tight from front to back. Usually the sides are not as bad, but, uh, but that's about it. So the whole roof now is sealed, you know, is insulated, and it's going to really quiet your ride down, you know, so... We do this for all our cars, actually. Okay. All right, so before we go any further, uh, this is what you're going to need now. You're going to need these clips, like I said, to hold the headliner into place. Okay, and then you're going to need a hammer like this, regular hammer, and a rubber mallet. Uh, you want the rubber mallet, we wrap them in a plastic bag just because we don't want the dirty mallet touching the new material. This is now the time, too, to clean your hands because you want clean fingers. You don't want to be touching this cloth to get it dirty. If you do get this dirty, uh, you can use some baby wipes uh, to try to, to, to dab it out. You, know? don't, you don't want to rub it in there, all right? So... Uh, wrap up your mallet with a clean bag so when, you, when we're hitting the headliner it doesn't dirty it up. So, um, alright, so get your glue. We're going to get the wind lace into the grippers now. Here's what we're going to insert into the grippers. If you have the, the typical style, which is the plastic wind lace, here, as you can see here, there's a, they have a, an edge here that clips into these grippers. We don't have that here. We have the old style, which is just kind of like a tube or a, a sponge rod that goes in there and we're going to hammer these clips down to hold it in place. Now remember our clips are missing down here. Remember that? But just remember if you, if you do have all these clips in place, which you most likely do, um, just make sure when you start putting this wind lace in, you're even from top to bottom. You want the bottom of this lace to be, you know, you know not bunching up down here, not too long down here or too short up top. Alright, so what we're going to do is start inserting. Here's your grippers, and just you want to just push that in place. Make sure you're even up top here. Okay, and then we're even at the bottom down here. This we're going to kind of have to improvise because of no teeth. So I'll have to put it there like that, and that looks okay. All right, so what I'm doing here now is you got to push this as best you can all the way in. If you can see here, just push it into the grippers. So you, you want that rod in there nice. Okay, push that in, and then... If you make a mistake, you know, you can pry open the gripper again. So periodically, once you hammer this, hammer these teeth down, and while you're pushing in, okay, hammer these down. Periodically, go back around outside and see how it looks. So it's hammering it down.
So I went down far enough for now. I'm gonna go out around outside now and make sure our lace looks okay. As you can see, it's nice and tight in there. We just gotta continue all the way down. Okay, nice. That's the way it's supposed to be. So just continue the rest of the way down and then uh, we'll look at it when we're all finished. So what I'm doing here is I messed up a little bit when I was pulling the, I gotta insert this rod a little more so I'm just taking these grippers out a little bit better so I can insert the rod or the, the lace so it lets a more uniform look on the outside. I'll show you. There we go. Okay, so push these in a little more. Need a little more grip. There we go. Better? Yep. Okay. I think that looks nice. That's the way it should be. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. So, like I said, we're gonna have to improvise down here. So we have no teeth. So what I have to do is most likely put some self-tapper screws in here, or like I said, some nails, just to kind of hold it in place. But it'll look just the same, no biggie. So since we didn't have any grippers here, like I said, they were rotted out um, when, we, when we got this car. This car was already painted when we got it. Um, we had to improvise a little bit to hold the lace in. As you can see, we put these nails in here that are like one-way nails. You won't be able to take them out because they have you know, grooves on them uh, to hold them in. So just a couple spots we tacked them in, but 90% of you guys out there are going to probably have all the teeth that go all the way down to the bottom. So you just got to want to make sure you do it the same as we did uh, up above here. So, and then what we're going to do is, if you want, you know, as you can see the padding here, we don't have anything covering the grippers. Um, depending on the material that you have, you might want to put either some more of this felt here over the grippers here, just to kind of hide the rough edge of them. So when you pull the material over, you don't see any, any bumps or, uh, you know, imperfections in the, in the material or you could put a piece of masking tape actually over them as well, just to kind of hide the grooves and the slots and, and whatnot, so. All right, so we're gonna glue the, the door post in now. This is the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when it comes to the headliner itself, or the two sides. So we got our, we got our lace in and we got our padding in, everything's uh, ready to go. So the, what we're gonna do is we wanna to glue to the metal surface. You do not glue to the felt padding that we put in. And when we did put in the felt padding, uh, if you notice, I'm a good, you know, half inch to three quarters of an inch away from the window uh, opening here, because this is where you want to glue to the actual, the lip here that sticks out the ridge, the edge, if, so to speak. That's where it gets glued to. Um, if you glue to the padding, that's when you start to bunch up and you run into a little bit of problem. But uh, we're using the vinyl material here. Some of you might be using vinyl as well. You're gonna need your hair dryer, so definitely get that out. Um, and basically, we're gonna start in the middle here. You don't have to pull so tight either. Everyone, people, some people think they gotta really yank on this to, to get it to look good. You don't have to really yank on it. And also, this is a dry on dry uh, marry here. So basically, you wanna spray here let the, let the glue get nice and tacky, almost dry, and we're also going to glue the material itself on this side so when we marry them together, dry on dry, it sticks well and then it really bonds. Um, so we're also going to glue on the outside lip here, the outside part of the window, so when we wrap this around, we get to, we get to glue it here. So you're also going to need either your scissors or your razors as well so we can make some slits. Alright, so that was a mouthful, let's get going. Okay. So basically under the quarter window, I'm starting to glue down towards the bottom. Now I'm going to start going down to the bottom. Like I said, don't worry about racing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really, it's not really crucial to get it done so quickly. All right. So we'll also go up here a little bit on the window. See right here, right where the ridge is. And then I also put up a little bit on here, even on the felt padding so I can get the material kind of stuck up there. So, OK. 
Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna spray the material. Be liberal with it, just go to town on it and get a good coverage. You don't have to glue so close here to the grippers. We're not gluing here. Okay, let's go on the outside of the car and I'll show you where I glue onto the, the window opening. You had it on high, and if you can see the H, the, the M and the L, so of course high, medium, low. I'm going to go to low because we don't want this splattering everywhere on the outside of the car here. So this is where usually a lot of glue gets oversprayed and this is where you're going to need your WD-40 to start wiping away the old glue. But basically what I'm going to do is glue, is glue the edge here and put it on low. Okay, so that's good for now. So we'll let that set up, let it dry, and then we'll be able to move the material over. Want to just soften it up. That's basically what we're doing. Want to get the wrinkles out, want it to get, give it a little stretch. Section at a time, that's all. We're gonna start in the middle section here, right under the quarter window. Basically start in the middle, just pull it, you don't have to pull it so tight. And right there. Okay, there we go. You just start working your way down. See that glue set up, so it's sticking okay now, you know? If you start to get any wrinkles, if you got, say, a TMI kit with the vinyl, and you start to get some wrinkles here, and it's not looking right, get the hair dryer out again, take your time, let it get soft, and pull it again. We're using Solfine's material here, so it, the material is actually very nice. Yeah, so before I get down to the bottom here, which is usually uh, could be a troublesome spot, I'm going to work my way up now to the window. This is where you need your razor, as you can see here. Now, of course, you can't pull it around because you need to start making some cuts into the material. What I'm going to do is just start setting it up a little bit here. Okay, see the edge where I glued to in the window? Do not glue back in here. You want it on the edge. Okay, so just feel around where the edge is. See, I got this is where I'm past the window opening. Just get your razor and cut a slit. Now you can, if you want to cut some more, you can. Now you can fold it over. Okay. There you go. Here's another spot. Let's see, glue that. So now I'm over. Just now you want to cut away and not cut in. See, so I am in another corner here. I have to slit it again here so we have a nice uh, pull. You want no no creases, so. Just feel where the line is, the edge, right here, and that's where I'm going to cut down. Make sure you got a sharp blade so you're not tugging. Okay, so now you have some more flexibility. You got more tools here, basically more arms of the vinyl where you can pull to get your wrinkles out. Slit another one here. Okay. Okay. 
And the most important, you want it to really glue to the outer edge. It's okay if it's not glued completely in here because the window seal will actually help pull that in. But as you can see here, we put a little glue and we're okay. So, and then up top here, I just kind of push it up. It's okay, we're gonna have a tuck. I might cut some of this excess off that we don't need. The headliner is actually gonna have a diagonal tuck from the, uh, the upper part of the headliner that goes over this, so you really, you're not gonna see this part. So, but I'll show you that later. So now I just need a little more glue down here to let this set up a little better. It's okay if you go a little beyond where the material is going to go. That's okay. Just get a little more in the material. Just want this to bond good. Again, dry on dry. Okay. Now if you're working with cloth, you got to be a little more, a little more careful with some of the glue. Just because sometimes the glue, if you bunt, if you put too much glue on, um, you know, it might start seeping through the material, and you don't want that. And that's when it starts to look really uh, kind of nasty. So um, be careful with the spray glue on the bottom. If you're using the rubber cement in a can and you got to brush it on, uh, be really careful when you do that with cloth. All right. So I want this to stretch, this is why I'm softening up the material. This is where your door panel goes here. See this line? So, as long as you got a nice uniform look, that door panel is going to cover this part so it's going to be able to hide things. And the back seat does come down to this point here. You see where this, the bolt is down here. Okay, the back seat's actually going to come here, so it's going to hide a little bit of this, but just I want to put it down anyway to make it look nice. So, I'm going to tuck this under. If you want, you can cut a little slit there just to free it up a little bit. That should be okay. Okay, so once you're all set up, gluing the post in here, you got this excess here that you gotta start cutting off. So basically, once it's all nice and glued, okay, it's nice and sturdy, that's when you just get a fresh blade and just start cutting off the excess. I just don't like clutter, so I'm gonna get rid of it for now. Okay, so nice and clean. If you have pop-out windows going in your car, there should be poles already pre-drilled into the body. And this is where you would, might want to start, you know, puncturing holes through the material so you know where to line up the pop-out window. So this part up here, like I said, all we had to do is just kind of glue it a little bit. You're not going to see this. 
I just pulled it nice and tight, put the hair dryer on it, pulled it nice and tight so you get a little, you know, a uniform look here. You're going to have a tuck that basically from the headliner down that's going to go from here across. So you're really not going to see this from up here. Remember we still got our two little screws in there for the uh, the hook, the coat hook and the, the assist strap to eventually go in there. So that's that. All right, so we're up to the back window now. This is probably the hardest part of the, uh, the headliner restoration. You see we got the big square piece um, that we're gonna have to put back. As you notice, it's got a ton of wrinkles on it because you can see that they folded it up and stuffed it into the, the shipping box. So we're gonna just iron this out a little bit, just try to get some of the main wrinkles out of it, soften it up a little before we start installing. Um, again, if you have the TMI kit, uh, most likely TMI is going to give you the top section of the window and then a separate piece for the bottom part of the window. So it'll be a little bit easier for you to put in uh, using that kit, but uh, originally the oval windows up to 59, were well, actually uh, 62 beetles, they would have had the uh, one piece kit 63 again. Vinyl headliner, they would have had it sewn down at the bottom portion of the window. So we're just going to do a little ironing right now. If you do have the vinyl headliner, whether it's you're using it for your oval or whatnot, don't use the iron, of course, on the vinyl. Use the hair dryer. Now we have it on a cotton setting. So if you do have settings on your iron, we, we set it to cotton. Um, and it seems to be getting the, most of the wrinkles out. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just kind of do a trial fit here, just to kind of center the material over the back window. Okay, you want to make sure you're even on both sides. You don't want too much material on one side to go into the grippers and not enough on the other. Um, now when we're going to glue this, you want to make sure you have a good, I don't know, half inch to three quarters of an inch uh, overlap from this top lip here, the top ridge, because this has to get tucked, if you can see that, behind Okay, the top piece here. A lot of guys will actually glue it to here. I personally don't think that was meant to be. It was meant to be glued behind it. You want a nice uniform look. Okay, so that's what we're going to try to achieve. Um, so basically we're going to start by gluing the top here. The material actually will get glued to the top part of this felt. And then we're going to get some clips that I told you at, that we had to pick up. Now I even got a couple of rulers with some cork back and you can just use a standard ruler. And what we're going to do is I'm going to try, I'm going to tuck this material down in here behind the firewall to kind of keep it straight. I'll show you as we go along. But uh, just make sure you have your scissors, your razors, your, uh, your clips in order so, and your glue of course. to center it, make sure we're good, and I'm just going to start putting it up. Don't worry if you're a little off, you can always pull it off. Again, like half inch up top. Oop. Okay. If you want to put your clips up here, you can. I usually uh, just put the glue down and it seems to be okay. Just kind of go straight across, make sure it's even. I'm just trying to get a uniform up here, you know, so we have a nice pull when we start moving downward. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of glue on this inside part of the material. Put it on low and go easy. Because what we want to do is eventually tuck it back here behind this, t this piece here. And then we want it to glue nice and tight here. So later on when we put the top headliner piece in, it's not going to bunch up on it. So just be careful. Just go lightly. Just get this material, put it in there. I'm going to find the bottom here, see where the firewall comes up. I'm going to make this 
pretty tight like a drum almost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rulers in here. Any 12 inch ruler will work. The wooden ones are fine. The old school rulers are fine. Just kind of tuck them in there, get them in there nice. Okay, now what we're going to want to do is get our clips and start pulling these tight to the sides over here. And just clip a couple spots. Okay, all right, so I got it clamped where the grippers are on the side. I got my rulers down here, and I got it basically semi-glued up top to, just to hold it. If you want to put the clips up top too, you can, but primarily that's where I kind of want to be. Um, just make sure the material is nice, you know. And don't worry about the wrinkles. We're going to start the massages down. And what we have to do is now cut a center slit behind uh, in the uh, in the material so now we can start finessing it up into the window what we'll do is we'll go on the out the back side looking in to see where we can cut all right so we're going to slit back here in the headliner now just to be safe i'm going to have my dad just kind of push up on the headliner just a little bit as you see where i'm pushing up here as well you know, this is where I have to slit. We want enough uh, material to wrap this way on the bottom portion of the window. This top portion, we got plenty of room to bring the headliner around and to glue to this lip. Okay, so you see we got plenty of room to grab here, and then we got plenty of room for this portion on the bottom, okay? What we want to do before actually I get back into the car, I want to start spray gluing the lip here with some glue and then start also spraying some glue on the headliner material itself so when we go back inside, I can just start pushing it into place. And like I said, don't worry about if it dries. Just remember, this stuff doesn't set up for a few hours, so. I mean, it gets tacky, but you know. Now I'm gonna start, Hitting the material here a little bit. Try not to gop it on too much because that shows behind the material. All right, so I want to start here in the center. I usually do, I feel where the lip is, and glue it to the back, look at that clip fly right out, glue it to the back side, on the outer part, on the outer lip, don't glue it to the inner lip, the outer lip is good. Now your clips might start flying out, which one just did already for us, because you're starting to already put tension on this. So now you know we need to do a couple little relief cuts. Just be careful where you're cutting. You don't want to cut too short. I usually go from side to side. You work your way around. Okay. Okay, so that's nice and uniform, right? That looks pretty good. Now we've got to keep working our way down. Here's the opening. Grab 
that out. Right, so just keep going around the window where you feel where the edge is. And continue to glue. Just you can move the clips around, and as you're working along, you know it's it's good to position them because a lot of times you need to free up, you know, the grippers. You know, I used to glue them in here, and then it, as I'm working my way down, it would wind up coming off. So it's good to have this flexibility to move the clips up and down when we need to. Keep working your way around. I know it's I got some wrinkles here, but we're going to be able to finagle them out and keep massaging it so we can work it around. We want this to be a seamless piece. Start straightening this out. There we go. See, as we work our way down, we'll be able to get these out. So what I want to do is get this clip in here and hold that in place. Okay. I'm going to take the bottom clip off because I know it's going to probably give me a little bit of a problem towards the corner. But I can get that out later. Okay. All right, so now we got the bottom portion that looks nice. So, as you can see, we got like 90% well, of it done. I just want to start working on these corners now, and now that we have those clips, we could take the clips off and then reposition. But overall, I think we're there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Put a little glue under here, just to set this down a little bit. All right, so what we were doing was, this takes a lot of trial and error, so we were, we pulled this off again, cut some slits into the bottom uh, cloth, and then uh, we started working our way outward uh, with the material and kind of poked it down in here. You see, I have those implements that I was telling you about to purchase, uh, to, to tuck this in here, keep the rulers in there, keep that nice and tight, and then start working your way up and out to get rid of the lines. So you can see here, we might have some lines here, but I could start pushing that out, as you can see with my fingers. And then when you see you got it right, get in there with a clip for temporarily to hold it in place. Now I got rid of those lines, and I keep working my way up. This was a lot of trial and error. It takes a lot of time to do this back window, but I think we got it. So um, the later model bugs, 58 and later, you'll have a bigger window, so it won't be as difficult. The tough parts here are down in this corner if you're working your way down. Um, we noticed that, you know, this stuff is, doesn't, it stretches, but not a lot. Uh, the tweed material, which I really like, that stretches great. So you, you probably get the back window done a little bit better. But the key here is to go down, basically work your way down, down, and then we started working into the center here and then working out. Now you might get some creases here in the corner, but the key is to dig you know, to push downward into the corner 
and get it behind this firewall to tighten it up some more. But uh, we're going to start just putting the rest of the clips in here and then uh, all you got to do then once you like it where it is, section by section you pull this away, shoot a little glue in there, shoot a little glue on the material and then get your, your big implement like this or one of these and start tucking it back into the grippers and then we'll have our back headliner done. Glue some of the material, go light, just because it can bunch up here and you don't want it to peek through the material. Okay, see now that glued, we got most of our, almost practically all of our wrinkles out. I think they're all out. And basically you want to work your way all the way down to the bottom and then you'll have the whole uniform side there without any wrinkles and seamless. When you're all done, you can basically stuff the rest of the headliner back in because the carpet's going to go over that anyway and hide that. So, or if you want to trim it off and cut it, that's fine too. But I kind of like doing this because it leaves the tension on the headliner. And then put the, t the carpet tucked back in there. That'll also pull it down a little bit tighter and get some of these out. Okay, now we're just going to trim off the excess. Right, so now that we got this whole headliner set up, uh, basically what we got to do now is just kind of trim uh, the excess off here. Um, just be careful really, basically what I like to do is trim it off to where the grippers are. Just kind of go down in a straight line, it doesn't have to be too fancy. Just, just to cut the excess away, because we're going to put that other strip from the other part of the headliner in. Kind of get the rest in here. <coughs> Just kind of push it behind the grippers. If you notice too, like some of these grippers have the little teeth sticking up. I don't know if you can take a peek here if you want to get the camera over here. See that right there? Some of these teeth are sticking up. They're not. Even this one's like kind of pointing his one finger up right, right there. So you might want to get in there with a hammer or with a pair of pliers. Just easy. You just kind of poke them that way a little bit so they're all even because you don't want one, you know, cutting out one way because the material, when it pulls over that gripper, you don't want it poking up through it. So, sweet. Okay, hopefully those wrinkles will come out with the carpet getting tucked back down in there to pull it, and I think yeah, we're all right. Yeah. All right, so the next step is to do, we're going to do this uh, behind the rear quarter window, and this gets glued down to the wheel hump, and the strips on this material, plastic strips that got to get tucked behind these grippers. So just kind of throw that, tuck this strip back like that so you have a nice fold and then put the strip into the, behind the grippers, make sure you're even up and down and you're kind of lined up there. If your teeth are sticking out, you might want to hammer them even again like I said last time. So, all right, let's see here. Okay. Kind of get it even. You might have to move the material out of the way. And you can see what I'm doing here. See, I got the strip inside the grippers. There we go. It kind of just slips in there. Some of them, like, the strips come up past the grippers here in this corner. I don't know if you can see that. That's okay. That's as long as it's even with this top piece here where the back window is, you should be all right but you just want to get that material down far enough so you're okay. Okay, just line it up. Just get this down there a little more. Okay. Now just get your trusty hammer and start hammering the grippers up. See that? Right up in here. Grippers are slammed down and the teeth are holding in the strip. Don't worry.
worry too much if the grippers are uneven. What all depends on is this strip that actually peeks its head out up above the grippers just a little bit. That's good because that's a straight line. So when you finally pull the material over, it'll be a nice straight line. Sometimes you might need your uh, plastic impact tool here to kind of get it down behind the teeth just so it's even. Okay. Now the headliner comes around and you got your nice straight line there. That's that. When we pull it, okay. All right, so what we're going to start to do is glue on, up on the pillar here first, the overhead part here, and. Uh, you don't really have to do dry on dry, you just have to just spray the material here. We're just going to spray the top part of this material. You don't have to spray down here yet. I just want to glue this top portion. And remember, go a good half inch to three quarters of an inch above the pillar so you can tuck the material in and behind uh, the pillar here so it has a finished look. I kind of go halfway to where the doorpost pillar is first just so I can control myself. <laughs> okay. Give yourself, like I said, a half inch to three quarters above. Just start massaging it down. And that's good. Now we're gonna work our way to the front, up over here, just to set it up into place, that's all. for the bottom grippers to grip around. Okay, so I'm gonna go like that, and then the grippers will take the rest, pretty much. Just kind of massage it down for now, just to hold it in place. Okay, this is where we're gonna start gluing the headliner to the, op the window opening. Uh, basically, I just put it on low again. All right, put it on the L and just start basically spraying the glue in the opening of the window and then we'll start spraying it actually on the headliner from inside here. Let's see. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to do the whole portion of this yet on the bottom. Just you know, halfway into the, the bottom. Okay, now we want to spray the back of the headliner to where it would glue here. Don't go too crazy up into it. Okay, now we're going to glue a little bit here on the inside. But once we're in the car, we can finagle that a little more. I'll show you here. Okay. I like to start kind of like mid-window of the quarter window. And you don't glue to the contour of the, the body. You want to glue, push it, and pull it right to the opening here of the, the edge of the window. And then just put with your fingers, push it up. And you should have here a nice uniform look straight down from the top to the window opening. Do not push, I see a lot of guys that push it and contour it to the inside of the car and that's not what you're supposed to do. So, you start working your way back. Now this part's a little bit easier than the back window of course. So I'm going to get my razor and I'm going to start chipping away here. Up. Some guys use the clips here too if you want to. I never really have to. The glue is strong enough to hold it. But you might want to just make some relief cuts. I'm in the corner here. You can make a couple slits here. Just be careful. Small cuts. 
And if you're when in doubt, just make sure you cut a little bit shorter than the window. You don't want to start cutting into the headliner. Then you're in trouble. So, okay, so before we proceed forward now, we've got to do the part over the wheel hump. Next part we're going to do is, before we start going down here on the window, um, we want to start gluing it to this wheel hump and to the back part of the firewall so we start getting tighter. So what I do is just basically spray on the hump so about there and then also inside here the door panel area which you want to kind of scratch off at whatever whatever garbage is in there the headliner doesn't glue to this it glues to the inside here where the door panel will hold it in it's right in there that's where that it's going to glue and then what you want to do is lift up the headliner and start just spraying the headliner, the back of it, so it goes dry on dry to the hump. I'm going to also glue the firewall here. Get a little glue on that. Let that set up a little. All right, so now it got tacky. It's kind of dry now, a little tacky there. And what I like to do is you want to glue the material just to the hump, not to the wall. A lot of people glue to the wall and it just doesn't, it's not right. You're supposed to glue actually on the hump so we have a straight wall with the material. So you just, I just kind of feel around with my fingers where the hump is. And that's, there we go. And you want to keep this straight up and down. So you pull this down to the wheel hump. Okay, work your way back, okay, now you see you start to wrinkle up a little bit here, and all you do is just pick it up and pull it, pull it tight, Oop. need a little glue on the headliner there. set up a little and then don't worry about the excess over here we'll cut that with a razor you know maybe about a, an inch or so away from the wall so you're good the carpet's going to go over this anyway so that'll be hidden now if you got this piece over here this is what the backrest rests on you could just have to cut this with the razor and make a hole for the headliner to go around it that's all Okay, so I'm going to just test fit this to there and just cut. So I just like to make an X. We'll slit up here in the corner as usual. Let's straighten her out. You gotta get a little glue here. Just a little bit under the quarter window. Just so this can hold. Okay. Let that set up a little. You wanna finesse and get the rest straightened so we don't have no wrinkles. What's good is once you start gluing this down, then when the carpet goes on down on top of it, that'll also pull it down, keep it nice and straight, it'll be uniform, and uh, all this, what you see here that looks kind of messy, will be, all be hidden. Okay. Okay. All right, so like I said, you glue inside where the door panel would sit. It's just with your thumb. That's what you glue in there because the door panel will hide that and you won't see it. So I just want to get this a little tighter down here on the wheel hump. Okay. 
Okay. Nice and glued. Glued. Okay. Now you can cut the excess off if you'd like. You don't have to if you don't want to, but the carpet will cover that, but I usually like to cut the excess off. There goes my finger. Oh. Look at that. Ha. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to do this tuck here on the door post and where to cut it here, which could be confusing sometimes to uh, people in the corner in the front part of the quarter window. Um, so basically what I like to do is just keep moving forward. Make sure to pull it tight, but not, you know, you don't have to yank on it. And just make sure it's all nice and uniform just to get the wrinkles out. And you want to make some relief cuts. Be careful you don't cut your finger like I did last time. I'm going to actually use my scissors instead. It's a little better. Okay. Whoop. Okay. So let's get this up into the window. Okay. Got all that in. Now, this part here, what I like to do is cut a piece, cut your line, go right to the edge of the window, and just make sure you don't want to cut too far in. I cut a straight line up there and then I look over here where the top part of the wind lace is here feel the top part with your finger and then what I like to do is come in the inside part of the wind lace not the outside part the inside part comes to feel the top and then what I do is I just kind of cut a, another vertical line like that and then all I got to do is tuck this basically a diagonal line tuck from the corner from the top corner of the wind lace down to the corner here of the quarter window okay and there's your tuck see got it and the rest gets glued up into the window that's it. later on we will cut that with a razor and that's how you do your tuck on your door post. And then basically from this point here, we have this flap. This is what then goes up into the grippers over the door. And that will get tucked in there. And that'll be nice and uniform up in here. I'll show you how to do that now. Okay. I'm just opening the grippers up a little more here above the door so I can spray some glue in there. Uh, I'd like to spray glue in there and a little bit on the headliner so when we stuff it in, uh, you know, it'll stick in there, and that's why I also put the felt padding, remember, on the grippers, so that'll hide the teeth of the grippers to show through the material. Just get your little squirt glue and just... Let's get it in there. Okay, then just put a little bit on the material. All right, so what I'm going to do is going to start pushing the headliner into the grippers. Basically, look inside here, pull it a little bit so it's nice and straight, and then I'll come out here, line it up to the gripper, and then with your your tool. Just stuff it in. Don't worry about the excess, we'll cut that off later. So the same here, I'm gonna pull it, take a peek inside, make sure I'm straight, and stuff it in. You can see over there, see how I got it in here? You can see it's a little stuffed in there, but that's okay, I'll get in there with a razor, and we'll cut that, and then with your rubber mallet, we'll bang those up. 
All right, so the last part of the pillar area here, before we finish tucking in in the front teeth, I usually leave this a little loose here, and you got to check. Uh, we got to do a tuck here, but this is we have kind of a lot of excess here. So, you know, here's the diagonal line, like I showed you last time when we put the padding in. So we got to do the same diagonal line, but we're going to have to tuck this to get that line. Cut that off, and then I'm going to cut a diagonal line. Most of these grippers you can put up by hand. So I just kind of push that up just to get it into place. And there is your tuck. Cool. Okay, now this top excess of the headliner now, you see all this up here? What you do is with your, your tool, like this, the plastic tool with the hook on it, you start pushing the headliner in. to the back. Okay. There you go. Now when you put the plastic strip in there, these might come out again, so you could always just either squirt them with a little bit of glue and then, uh, you know, tuck it back in there, but for the most part, it pretty much, it'll, it'll stay. So, I see what I mean when I, when we spoke about the padding up here, you want it to be even up there, but you don't want it to be, you know, all bunched up or higher than the pillar, because then when you wrap that material around, you don't want any lumps up there. We'll go to the opening here, but over the door, come this way. All right, so basically the same thing. What I do is I try to get the blade deep into the opening. You know, you, want, you don't want to do it on the edge of the teeth. You want to get up in there and to cut it straight across because you need enough slack to go into the grippers to be, uh, to, so when we hammer it up with the mallet, it covers it and it looks like a nice finish. So I'm going to get up into there pretty deep and cut straight across. Yeah, so come over here. If you can get tight in here, you can see how high up. You might want to come down a bit, Dad, and, and look, go up into it. You see here? That's how high into. That's where I cut it. Okay. You need enough slack. So now when we bang this up. This is all fit, this is all, there's enough, you know, cloth in there to be held. Okay, so after I cut the excess off, you might want to get in there with your tool, and just one last shot, just go in there and make sure everything's glued down. If you see a little bit of remnants of material in there that's small enough to get stuffed in there, you can do that. Uh, but for the most part, just go in there and do one last tap up and down just to make sure it's glued in place. And now we can use our rubber mallet and hammer it up. Basically, just start from the back and hammer my way up. All right, so now we'll go on the inside of the car and you'll be able to see the finished look. And then after that, uh, you guys could do the other side. Okay, so here's our finished look. There's our tuck from the start. Here's over the door. There's our tuck over the door post, which is always a tricky one. Like I said, it's diagonal. It's up from the top of the wind lace. And it goes diagonal into the corner of the co top of the quarter window. And then here's the back area around the back window where it meets up and where it's nicely glued to the wheel hump and to the back firewall. Again, the carpet's going to cover that. And again, it does not glue to the wall. Where you glue it is into the door panel area. 
and on the wheel hump. Okay, as you can see, we also reworked uh, the other side, passenger side. Worked our way up and around again. And over the door. Everything looks pretty good. There's our tuck again on our door post. And anytime you see wrinkles that you want to fix, again, you know, now's the time to try to fix it. The glue has not set up uh, solid yet. Um, pretty much overnight, that glue will get nice and hard and it'll be a little more difficult in the next day to, to fix it. So now that it's still kind of moist is when you should actually fix it. But that is that. So between the back headliner, back window, which was the tough part, and the sides, we are three quarters of a way there. All we got to do now is under the quarter windows here, and we got to do, of course, the final roof. This is the big center square section, the final piece that has to go in on the top roof. You see the four strips around each side. This, this piece is one of the pieces that's always stuffed in the box, but we're going to do some ironing on this as well. Try to also straighten out the strips. You see they're all curved and bent. You want them to be kind of straight when it goes into that roof. So we're going to flip it over and you see they, they have the pockets for the bows. And what you're going to want to do is grab your bows. And most, most of the time the bows are the same size, but sometimes you might want to check the length. Now these are the same size. So sometimes the you know you have longer ones that go in the center and the, the shorter ones go on the ends but for this one they're, they're all the same. Um, now when we took the bows out of this car, the original headliner, um, the hooks were all on one side. Some of these earlier bows they have hooks that actually hook into those top pillars there so we're going to keep those on one side. And then basically, you, want, you might want to clean off the bows if they got a lot of gunk on them or if they got a lot of glue or they're kind of dirty. But uh, just open up the pocket in the headliner on the, where the bows slip in and just slip them in. Okay, just make sure you're poking out the other side. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, so now just start straighten the, the strips as best you can. A lot of times, like I said, they stuff these in the boxes on the shipping and they get all bent out of shape. So the distance between this pocket and this strip is much smaller than this pocket and this strip. So the front strip has the bigger distance between the strip and the pocket. That's how you know this strip goes into the front. The rear one is a shorter distance. All right, so basically I just kind of grab the headliner like this and just kind of get my way in there, make sure the front is towards the front. All right, so here's your bows. We're gonna just insert them into the, the top. Okay, get this out of the way. Get that in there. Okay, get this one out in here. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. And one more. If you don't have bows or you lost bows, you can either go to the hardware store and get a dupe or they do sell them at the V-Dub shop, so. Okay. All right. So now that we're up, if you can get us a view of this. Now you gotta start positioning the bows, front or back, and make sure they're even straight across. You don't want one bent in this way, bent the, out the other way. You want it all nice and straight. They should be able to slide okay. If they don't, you might have too much fabric or too much uh, padding up into the roof for where it's getting caught. Okay, all right, so let's start with, I like to start with the front header. 
the front bow here. Okay, and you get your strip, make sure your strip is facing this direction, kind of inward. You don't want it facing like this, because that means it's not going to hook onto anything. So you want this to hook. So you want to basically be facing the stitches on the strip. And just start inserting it into the front bow. Okay. Just Sometimes you might have to bend it a little bit just to get in. Okay, that's one. Now you get your plastic tool and to help push it in. Okay, good. You can pull on it, give it a little yank, and you see if you see, I'm hooked. It's not going anywhere. That's it. And this is why I put that pad like right above the bow because now that strip can't come out. A lot of times that flips out and then it's too tight, you know. The next step is to then, then do the back. So you want to pull and make sure now your bows are all lined up into the top because this is crucial. You know, you don't want to start putting this in and the bows aren't straight. Then you can't get up in there. So line up your bows, make sure everything's lined up right. All right, so let's start inserting into the top here. And I know it seems kind of tight, but that's good. You want this to be nice and tight and even looking. Okay. Okay. in my tool, get your tool, and start helping it in. Okay, look at that. Yep. Now don't worry about if the other part of the headliner starts to come out. You see it's starting to come out over here. See this part here? It's starting to come out. That's okay. We can get back in there and push it in with this tool or the other tool. Now, to fix this headliner piece, just tuck that back down in there, you see? Just like that, and it'll hold. All right, we're in front to back. Now we're gonna do side to side. Tuck it down, get it in. Now you got the bows over here, so it might be a little more difficult to get them in, but try to get it in by hand first, and then you can use your tool to push it in. Sometimes you can hear it snap in like you heard before. Okay. Okay. Okay, front part. Just push it in. This side's going in a little easier, of course, because we still have the other side to hook in. So this why this is going in a little bit easier. But once we start pulling the other side, okay. and as you can see, as you start to tuck it in here, it starts to get tighter. The headliner's starting to look nice, nice and taut. Okay, so again, use your tool. Make sure the strap, the strip is, is folded in the right direction, because it's got to be able to hook. If you have it folded the other way, it has no, it has no place to hook. So, okay, it should fall right into place. There we go. Okay, I see the front starting to come out again. So I'm gonna have to fix that, but let's concentrate on this first. Okay. Okay, that's in. Okay, perfect. Then get that strip in. Okay, good. Now sometimes after we've hooked everything in, you still have some wrinkles as if the material wasn't measured correctly and is maybe a little too long from side to side. So what we actually been trying to do, actually what we fixed up here in the front, the front patch, was we cut some cardboard strips like this and then you get them up into the headliner and start stuffing it down to give it a little more stretch. Now, if I start pushing that down, you see the wrinkles go away. So, 
that's another tip what you could do is stuff this cardboard strip, maybe about an inch thick, an inch wide rather, uh, by, I don't know, say 12 inches or so, and get your tool and stuff it down in there. And look, that'll get rid of that wrinkle. That'll push those wrinkles out, you see? So just another tip if you want to get a more uniform look instead of having some wrinkles in the fabric. You know, again, it all depends on which company you're using for the headliner. Um, with the tweed material, you usually do not see this. All right, so one of the last parts you got to do for the headliner is then put in the rear quarter window pieces. Basically, just like before, you got to glue, you know, dry on dry onto the pillar here. And just glue that down. And then you can, what you want to do is you're in the door panel area here. You can either cut this or you can leave it on. It doesn't matter. The door panels are going to cover this anyway, so it's really not going to make much of a difference. You just want to make sure that this, that this end piece doesn't go past the door panel uh, seat there where it would sit. If it goes past there, it's kind of kind of look funny. The door panel is going to be here and then the material is going to be over here. So you just glue that dry on dry and then uh, just trim the outside like we did on the opposite side of the window here. You're going to trim that if there's any excess and then you're good. Next we're going to put in the dome light and what we want to do is make sure you got some clean hands which are going to be rubbing new material. Just want to feel around where the hole is for the dome light and I can feel it, it's right up in here. As you can see, I'm pressing in on the material. Let's see, so I usually like to make an X. Okay, feel the other corner, make an X. All right, feel in there for your wires. Now, your brown ground wire goes on the side where the switch is. So if you have the original style, you just got to, you know, poke the, the bare end of the wire into the screw. If you have a newer dome light, some of the more inexpensive ones have the plugs on them, so you might have to put plug ends on the end of the wires to, to make it work. But they do reproduce the, the old style now, so. Really the final part now is to put in the assist straps, but first we want to find our screws that we left in there so we can feel around and make sure we know where to cut. So what I'm doing is now I cut an X where the material is covering the screw so I can poke the screw through and then finally get it out. There's one. Take these two flathead screws out and then what we'll do is we've got to punch holes through the assist straps uh, for the screws to go in. Okay, so here's our new assist strap and what we want to do is we want to be able to punch holes through this so the hook can go through. Now like I said, I mean you see it's kind of thick between the hook and the new material. If You can see how thick that is. For that screw to pass through here and then come out the other end and screw into the body might be kind of tough. So what we need are some long machine screws or self-tapper screws. These seem they're much longer and just enough to stick out and attach to the body of the car. So we might have to use those but what I like to do is kind of line up where the hook would go. It's usually about, I don't know, half an inch or three quarters of an inch from the top of the strap. And I just kind of make a, a dot with a pen or a pencil. Let's see where my, my dots are. And we have an old fashioned hole puncher, or you can use a razor or some sort of another punch, you know, to punch these holes through. But what I do is I get the biggest punch that we have, line it up on the hole, squeeze. Sometimes you got to bang it on the table to get a little more through. And we got our hole. There's our two holes. You line up your, your hook 
which is screw through, let it poke out. I like the self tapper screws because they have the cutting end on them, so they grab pretty quickly. And there's your cis straps. Now we're going to in install them. Okay, so here's our two holes here. I took out those Phillips, uh, those, uh, I'm sorry, the flathead uh, screws that came out. These are the originals, as you can see, but they're kind of short to go through the material, the hook, the material, it just won't grab. So I usually use these self tappers and they grab. If you want to go to the hardware store, I guess, and pick up these screws with the same thread for a little bit longer, I guess you could. Um, you know, but I'm just going to use these self tappers for now and just get those in. Kind of line it up with the holes. You can poke around. Make sure you're lined up. I can tell this one's about to grab. Yep. All right, I got them lined up. I just turned them in a couple turns. It's a little loose here, like you can see, but I had to finagle around just to get the screw head, uh, the threads into the hole. Um, just get them in nice and tight. Didn't take much to get them tight, so. And there you go. Vintage assist straps. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention was, remember the old little hook that went back here? Okay, this is what these old little hook, hooks used to look like. They had these up until about 67. So for all of our early bugs that have the multi-piece headliner, you're all gonna have this. And that little screw is back there. Remember I told you to put the screw Ah, uh, there it is, right there. And there's your final hook. Okay, so here's our headliner. We are basically done. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. A couple areas we could still touch up here and there, but overall, that is the gist of it. Um, in my opinion, I like I said, I do like the tweed much better. You will not have some of these little fine imperfections that you see here in the material. Tweed really hides that stuff as it's a woven material. Um, like I said, you can cut some of those cardboard strips for some extra tension on the headliner uh, to make this look a little bit better. You can try steaming it and then let it shrink. Um, but overall, uh, this is the way the headliner should look. And uh, now all you have to do is basically pop the windows in and I have a video on that on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube and, and check that out to see how to do that. But as for this, the sake of this video, we are completed with the multi-piece headliner for 63 and earlier Beatles. Okay, so that wraps up the multi-piece headliner for uh, 63 and earlier Beatles. Um, like I said, the key to this is just take your time, go slow, and if you come into any troubled spots, just take a break and maybe go get a cup of coffee or something and then come back, take a deep breath and try it again. Um, right after you put the headliner in, the next step basically would be either the carpet or the uh, windows to put in. And I have a window uh, video on YouTube or my website at classicvwbugs.com. Um, so, Take a peek on my website, sign up for my newsletter, and uh, we're always having more and more videos come out. So um, if you have any questions, you could also email me, chris at classicvwbugs.com. Good luck. Um, um.